Back in my first video about functions, I mentioned that they need to map every single input to a single output. But now I'm gonna go dive just a bit deeper into what that means using a minimal amount of math to make my point. My name is Wolf, and I'm the barely functional dev that's gonna explain all this to you. First of all, to recap, let's take a look at one of the diagrams that we had back in the days of the first function video. We have a representation that shows sets for the input values and the output values, and then arrows that show how the inputs map to the outputs. And those arrows actually define what make up the function itself. And those arrows can point uh, from multiple inputs to the same output, just for a recap to understand the rules of the game. And uh, the technical term for functions that, that follow the rules of functions is a total function. Frequently, that's just shortened to function. Uh, and the rules that I'm talking about that you need to follow in order to qualify as a function is that every value on the left, the inputs, need to map to a single value on the right, the outputs. And the second rule is that all the values on the left need to have one of those mappings. Just for extra credit, the technical term for the first of the rules is a functional binary relation or right unique. And the formal name for the second of the rules is a serial relation or left total. Sometimes functions that follow these rules are called one-to-one. -one. But anyway, let's, let's look at what the violations to these rules would look like. So here we have an example where we take a set of inputs and we map them to a set of outputs. You'll notice some things are kind of a little bit off about here. We have the number two as an input maps to multiple different output values. And what's also strange here is that three and four have no mapping at all. And so when a function violates either of those two rules, it's called a partial function. One real world example of a partial function is, let's say a function that divides by the input that you feed into it. So this leaves zero out in the cold, all alone, without any mappings. Another example is something like a random number generator that can generate multiple possible outputs for the same input. So in order to make a partial function into a total function, or just a real function, we have two options. We can exclude the inputs that are invalid, let's say with maybe a special non-zero input type, for the example of dividing by the input number, or you can change the output type to include a special value that we can map for the zero. Uh, the second option is something that you can expand to handle other types of error cases and include more information. Some languages even allow for multiple return values in order to make writing those functions easier but you can do this by wrapping these values in tuples, objects, arrays, whatever your language happens to support. Any of those, however, are way better than throwing exceptions, which in my opinion is just the worst possible way to handle this problem. Anyway, that's enough math for today. So please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you did not like this video, then leave a comment below telling me what I can do better.